Ta-da! And the fretwork is finally finished. So now all I have to do is peel off the pattern and all that oh-so-reflective tape and see what the final product look like, looks like. So give me half a second here because this is a delicate process. You have to pull you have to pull hard enough to pull the tape off, but not so hard that you break the fretwork. Luckily, as you can see here, well, as you might be able to see here, I'm all depends on how this camera wants to behave, is uh, you can see a lot of glue stretchies from the tape. Those actually rub right off fairly easily. So I'm not too worried about those. But when it comes to sanding this thing, it is going to be a pain in the butt. So i got to use a flat sanding block and hopefully it doesn't damage any of this delicate fretwork. So, yes I know. It's like an unboxing video, only it's woodworking. Go figure. Alright, so we get the pattern off, almost, yeah. There's always that one piece that doesn't want to come with the rest of the pattern. It's kind of funny. There we go. And, ta-da, we have the piece. So, this is the lid of the oval box. I've already used it, or, well, the original pattern, and cut out the bottom of the box, which is solid. So, those, these two are roughed out to size. And let's see if I can get it with a dark background so you can see better. There we go. So yeah. Fretwork's done. And now to cut out the body. Now that's uh, roughly inch thick. A little over an inch thick. Uh, combination of eighth inch thick uh, birch ply and the poplar sandwich. So that uh, can have nice a nice hefty thickness to it plus also get um, the nice uh, banding uh, of the different colors of wood on it so get that done now wanted to film a video of me cutting the rest of this thing out but it just with work like this I'd rather concentrate on how the work looks um, and then show you guys the finished product because it's one of those things that's boring as all heck for me to show you guys because of the style scroll saw I use it does not have a handy little knob to detach and reattach the blade every time I'm switching holes I have to grab an allen wrench unscrew it and basically it takes a while to transfer so it's not exactly a quick process but, huh, there we go. Looks like some kind of odd jellyfish, but this is the uh, tape off the back of the project. Yeah, I know, it's so exciting. Uh, but, anyways, I know the lighting isn't the greatest. I'm dealing with fluorescent lighting, and cameras don't like fluorescent lighting, I've come to find out. Or at least, not cheap cameras, anyways. If I get it in the light, it, it blazes out because it's reflecting too much light. But if I put it in the dark, it fades out. So, eh, anyway. Neither here nor there. But, I almost want to put that pattern on the wall. You know? It just goes. <laughs> I know, I'm weird. But that's why you guys watch my videos. And we know this. So, fucks with the camera, fucks with the camera. The camera stand will agree with me. Of course it won't. It's mechanical. Okay, so. I'm going to try and position this camera so you can see me doing at least a little bit of scroll work. Not going to be the most fascinating cut in the world because I'm basically just cutting two big arcs in the wood. But I'll get to show you guys at least the uh, body of the box when everything's said and done. Now, I'm not going to make you watch the entire cut because it's going to put you to sleep. But at least get something machine wise involved now here's where the lighting becomes a pain again because it has a uh, machine steel table it reflects the light and blazes out the camera once again so I'll do the best I can guys be right back
I get my mug, my ugly mug in here. Uh, get to getting. forgot to say is uh, this pattern here was completely cut out with a 20R Olsen and I like the Olsen blades because they, they don't snap around corners and I think I've probably mentioned this a hundred times so I'll cut that there um, but this blade that I'm using uh, is a uh, Olsen number no. three mock speed blade now by a mock speed yeah mock Speed blade. What that means is uh, it skips every uh, two teeth and puts in a single tooth. So it's a very open tooth blade so it can clear a lot of material. So cutting through uh, over an inch of wood, albeit softwood, this makes a very clean, very precise cut. That's why I like it. By the way, make sure your pieces make sure your pieces straight when you turn the damn machine on, or you're gonna look like an idiot, like I just did. Okay. Now we get to fix the air tube, get everything pointed right and back in the right direction. <sighs> like I said, make sure. guys I being such a long cut I really could just stick the thing on high and go balls to the wall and get it done faster but I've noticed with this machine it vibrates so violently on high that um, I do not get a clean cut let alone a straight cut uh, because the, the thing is vibrating all over the place and the piece is dancing around and it's knocking stuff off the workbench and having a grand old time doing everything but cutting straight so it's a it's a more involved process to do it in low. Uh, this is only a two-speed uh, scroll saw. It's a Dremel 16-inch saw. I love how it cuts. I just wish it had more adjustability on the speed. So eventually, what I'll do is I'll try to figure out some type of a dimmer switch set up for it uh, that can handle the amp load of the motor, and see if I can put in a variable speed on it myself. But I don't know if that will cost more than just getting a variable speed table or uh, scroll saw. So, anyways.
Now when I get to a very sharp uh, corner that's more than 90 degrees like this, I like to cut a couple of relief passes in because the blade is not designed to turn that far without rounding out the corner and making it look less than professional. So uh, I, I cut enough relief on the part that I'm getting rid of, which is the center of the box, so that I can turn the blade, get a nice sharp corner in there, and then just go about doing the relief for where the magnet's going to sit to hold the lid close. have a box. So definitely going to hold on to this piece of wood because a piece of wood this size is I know I can find a use for it. You know me, I'm a scrapper. Uh, if a wood can be reused for another purpose, I'm going to do it. So that sells that. So see, this is why I like to use tape. The pattern comes off so clean and easy. Now, so all I have left to do is peel the uh, pattern off because I had used the uh, base of what's going to be the bottom of the box to uh, trace out the shape of the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut inside the line that I've drawn on the wood so that it's a little bit smaller than the uh, than the base and the lid, so that I can sand these two to the size of the box so everything is nice and symmetrical and concentric and looks better. You know, one of these days I'll learn how to talk properly and then you guys might actually get an interesting video. I don't know. You keep watching my stuff so I must be doing something right. Alright, so that part's done and it is just it well obviously it was just cut out so that was kind of redundant to say that but still needs to be sanded but I'll take all this tape off and uh, get the outside of the box cut out so you'll see what I'm talking about I'll be right back okay and just like that a simple pencil line to follow for the outside edge of the box so hopefully I'll get a nice clean cut out of that and then it'll be on to the finishing process, which I will do another video on. test a bit when you try to go too fast so pause it here and show you when it's done almost done
That looks in the eye. Oh, that's what you get for getting too close to your work. Okay, now the cut finished a lot more rough than I wanted it to. Uh, I'm just going to try and shave it a little bit so that I don't have to take that much off with the belt sander. That cleaned, that cleaned it up a little bit. You know, like, oh, eh. Only problem with using plywood is you're going to get breakouts every here and there. And I don't know if you can see these or not, but the plywood la layers have actually split off in a couple of places. So what I'm going to have to try and do is use a little bit of the sawdust and some wood glue to fill those in before the bottom is uh, glued on to the piece so that you don't see little gaps along the side of the work or the side of the work so well, other than that I have, I have some sanding to do to clean up this so it doesn't have the saw edges from where I missed the line other than that the box is roughed out so we have uh, as I juggle pieces. So this is the rough box so far. So it's going to be a nice oval box and like I said it's going to have a uh, scissor lid on it so one side is going to be held down by a, a button head dowel and the other side is going to have a, a magnet and a washer clasped so the whole lid will slide off like that. So, we're getting there, folks. Uh, at least I can show you some actual progress and not just a piece sitting on a piece of table. Or on a piece of table. I need more coffee. Can you tell? Alright, guys. More to come. <laughs>